We are all given this gift that we have in laughter and in humor. But what happens to all of us as adults is sometimes we repress that and we forget to play. Why humor? Because it works. It is the most essential human tool that we have in that little invisible toolbox that we carry with us each and every day. It sparks creativity. It brings joy in anything that we do. It engages us as human beings. No matter where we're from, right? No matter what we do, our nationalities, our age, the super glue that holds us all together, I would argue, is humor. And humor has nothing to do with jokes. By a show of hands, how many of you remember and tell jokes well? 100% of the time, raise your hand. 2% of the population. <laughs> Most of us forget the punchline. We laugh before it's over. <laughs> right? But if I asked you all sitting in here today, how many of you believe you have a good sense of humor? You would raise your hand. It's not about jokes. It's about an enthusiastic way of looking at life. And each and every morning that we wake up, we choose what glasses we want to wear. And there are many human beings that wear the dark ones where everything they look at is dismal and gray and negative and down. And then there are those who wear the rose-tinted ones that no matter what they look at, it's just a little bit brighter, a little bit better. It is humor that connects us all as human beings. It provides a depth to the relationship that no one understands until you begin to laugh with another human being. And that memory is there forever. And when you see that person a year later, you bring back that humorous situation that occurred. Humor could equal love. Because love is a connection, and so is laughter. And when we begin to love taller than we stand and louder than we can speak. Because sometimes we have a hard time with that word, don't we? Some of us want to say it, but we don't know how. And some of us say it, but we don't mean it. But we all know that love is truly what connects us all together. So the gift that we have in laughter is that depth of relationship. Now in connecting with another human being, we all know that what's funny to one is not funny to another, yes? Absolutely. And we have to look at that. Because each one of us, as I say, become different. I love this book because it reminds me sometimes of how we all begin. Just a blank coloring book with no pictures. And the wonderful thing about all of us is as we grow and we begin to experience life, we put these wonderful lines that make that picture ours. What truly gets us to the level where we want to get to is the simple gestures in life. A smile, an act of kindness, comfort from another human being. And what it does is it colors in each and every one of those pictures for each and every one of us. And if this is entertaining you, you probably need to get out more often. <laughs> Some of you are like... This is what it's about. We all bring humor to the table differently. And in humor, what's funny to one is not funny to another. And in all human that I, humor that I've studied over the years, we know that there is forbiddens in humor. Each one of us in this room has what we call forbiddens. And comedians use this at times. And sometimes we may be in a workplace where there's an use of humor that's kind of off color, if you will. Well, people that use too many forbiddens in their humor are people that we call dirty, gross, immoral people. People that don't have any forbiddens in their humor are people we call cold, uptight, humor constipated, if you will. <laughs> you know, they want to let go, but they can't. <laughs> but sometimes we have to test those forbiddens, do we not? Absolutely. I've worked with workplaces over the last 10 years in communicating and how we work together. And it would be my belief, and I would state to you today, that great workplaces create the conditions that make them wonderful. That's true. It's a fact. Look, can you imagine? <laughs> Just for a moment. As he drives around the street, imagine the feeling that he has of joy. 
And tell me you wouldn't buy that guy's plumbing. <laughs> That's a condition, is it not? Absolutely. Now you go to a dentist's office, and you're afraid of the dentist, and you're a little child, and you see these two wonderful dental hygienists who have a sense of humor, which equals love and compassion and joy. That's where we can get to. Look, in the early 1980s, I went to my first Ringling and Brother Bailey Circus. The attraction during that, it was not the elephants, not the high wire act. It was clowns. I studied and I was passionate about the fact that if I could dress as a clown, I could become a character of laughter, a giver of love. And in the 80s, it was okay to be a clown. <laughs> It was a joy for me. It was a pleasure. It was an honor to be someone who could provide laughter. And I worked in hospitals with cancer patients. And I worked in nursing homes. And I worked in hospice. And I saw the joy that we could bring with props, magic, humor and laughter and jokes. It was powerful. In 1986, my world changed. My first son was born. And Michael was born with a lot of issues. At three months, we thought we were going to have a miscarriage. And at six months, we were told that the baby was not growing as it should. And at nine months, during a cesarean, during a cesarean section, we were told to be prepared because we weren't sure if his lungs would be developed. And at 9.02 on December 1st of 1986, we heard a scream. And at that moment, I had joy. I had happiness. And at six weeks, we were told that he wasn't going to be normal, that he had a very rare growth disorder called Russell Silver Syndrome, and that he would never be taller than five feet, and he would never weigh more than 100 pounds. He would be different. And I lost my sense of humor. I lost my joy. Five years later, at a park, I found that joy again. I took Michael to the park. He was on a swing. And some little boys came up to him and said, you want to play? And you see, during that time, I understood what the tears of the clown meant. And those little kids said, you want to play with us? I said, no, honey, I'm just sitting here. They said, no, you ought to play. And they brought me out. And they gave me a stick. They said, this is a magic wand. And if you go up the tree, that's the castle. And that dog is the fire-breathing dragon. <laughs> and then I went on that twirly thing until I got sick. And I began to sob at that moment because I understood what brings you back from that stress. The biggest destroyer of happiness in life is stress, and kids can bring it back. It's kids. It's the opportunity to experience their imagination, their creativity. And kids became my superheroes. My superheroes, they truly did, because kids take risks, don't they? And kids know how to have fun. <laughs> and kids understand laughter, and kids understand play. But most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, kids understand love. They understand the deepness of love. And I would ask you all today to connect with each other through love. Deeper than you can imagine. Don't wait. You think any of these people that were on that plane that day wait one second to get up in the morning to say I love you to someone? I have this picture. It's in my office. I look at it every single day. And I think about that day. And I wonder how many of those 3,000 plus people may not have said I love you before they left for work that day. Don't wait. When you leave here today, get on your phone and call someone that you haven't called before and tell them that you love them. Don't wait because there's no guarantees in life. Marriage? Any guarantees? Buckle your seatbelt up in your car? Any guarantees? Life's a crapshoot, man. Could someone walk in here, tell you you have a very important phone call, and that phone call change your life forever? Right now. So say I love you to someone today. I'm going to call my dad when I'm done here and say, Dad, I love you. He'll say, have you been drinking? <laughs> And we will have connected at that moment. <laughs> Say I love you to somebody. 
I leave you with this. In all of my time in looking for the greatest prop that there was around, the greatest prop that could be, I found it in something simple. I used magic tricks. I used juggling clubs. I used every type of object I could think of to make people laugh, but there was only one that was universal. No matter where I go in the United States, no matter where you go in the world, it is a universal way to connect with another human being. And so I would pass this on to you, a gift, a gift of laughter. You see, I bring this box with me wherever I go. It is only in this gift that we can truly be one. <laughs> and know that when you are wearing it, you have love. Thank you very much.